Hi y'all, Hannah here from Bearsden Essentials. Today, I'm gonna to be talking to you about how to get started with hand knitting. It's part of a series that will walk you through every step of creating your first or 101st knitting project that you see here, which is a lovely twisted headband made using just garter stitch. If you've ever wanted to learn how to knit, but you felt intimidated, what I'm here to do is help peel back some of the layers and help you feel more comfortable with the learning curve. Like with anything else, knitting is about practice. So you build that muscle memory in your brain for the stitches, but also with the mechanics of what your hands and fingers are going to be doing. My favorite saying is that every mistake that you make as a beginner is just a more advanced technique that you didn't mean to use yet. I've been knitting since I was about six, so in that 30 year span, I've made every advanced technique or mistake that you can imagine. When I first got started knitting, I wasn't even actually aware that there was quote unquote correct ways to do everything necessarily. I mean, for me, if I couldn't get to a yarn shop to ask questions and I was born before YouTube, I would just make up a way to create the solution that I wanted to figure out for my patterns. And a lot of times I would just adjust patterns as I was going. And it wasn't until I started writing patterns that I actually kind of held my feet to the fire and started building a system instead of just making it up as I went, which works if you're knitting for yourself. But if you're running a business like my partner and I do, you kind of have to remember how to write everything down and keep track of what you do because you might be making 50 of the same item and you need them all to look the same. The thing is though, even with the quote unquote correct way to do things, I still sometimes like my way of going about it better. And I realize too that there are other knitters, whether they're hand or machine knitters, who get to the same solutions and work it out on their needles, but go about it in a different way. I think that's the cool thing about knitting is that there are a lot of opportunities to arrive at these same solutions. The thing is though, is that there are opportunities to do things better and make life easier for you. So what I'm gonna present in this series is just some tips and tricks for getting started so that you can build that muscle memory in your brain and your hands and start to really own the creation of your projects. And then you can start getting into the more advanced techniques and do those stitches intentionally instead of on accident. Part of why I wanted to do this series is because there's so much research, as I'm sure anybody who's coming to this video wanting to knit has read, is that knitting is very anchoring and soothing and meditative. And it's even been shown to help with things like depression and anxiety. And it's something that people use if you've looked up knitting for therapeutic purposes, it can help with kicking addictions, even some low level memory loss assistance. The thing is, is you don't need to have some sort of superhuman artsy craftsy gene. Believe me, I have family members who are artists and all I can draw is stick figures. You just need to follow a few basic rules and be willing to put in the practice so you build the dexterity in your hands. And then over time, you'll realize that you're mastering this craft that you can take with you anywhere and you can do anytime. And it really can bring you a lot of joy and comfort. And that's my hope for you watching this video. So the project we're gonna talk about today is one of the most fundamental projects that you can do. When a lot of people get started knitting, they will work on something like a dishcloth or a scarf. And as cool as those things can be and as useful as they can be, I wanted to mix it up from the traditional beginner project. This project might look like it requires some sort of advanced technique, but really it's just one stitch. It's the garter stitch. So you can see here how that comes together in the end. And then this part is just sewn together at the end, which I will include a tutorial for. What's cool with this project is you actually only need two things to get started. One, it's a skein of yarn and two, it's your knitting needles. I really like Clover's knitting products. I've actually been using them since I was a kid and they are fantastic for needles and notions and all things related to knitting. And if you're a sewer, you can also get a lot of sewing notions there as well. So when I teach people how to knit, I always have their first project be in worsted weight yarn. And so what that means is just not the physical weight of the yarn, but actually the thickness 
of each strand. So there's yarns that go from size zero, which is very fine and lace weight, which is perfect if you want to sew things like doilies onto cloths or very fine lace work for like baby's clothing. And then they also have the super jumbo yarn, which is a seven. And that's really great for those cute chunky knits that are very fashionable right now. Worsted weight is category four. And so the way you can tell is you actually look at the label. So this is what comes with every skein of yarn. This yarn is actually rolled into a cake, but here's what it looks like when you first get it. It comes like this, and then what you do is you can wind it, and a lot of times your local yarn shop will have a swift that they can use to wind your yarn for you so you can pull from the center, which makes when you're sitting and you're in your workflow, it makes it pull evenly, so your stitches are more likely to be even compared to this where it's just wound in such a way that you're gonna pull it unevenly. And especially as a new knitter, you really wanna focus on getting your tension even. So the back of the label, this is something that can be super intimidating. So just to demystify it, what I was getting at is that category four, you wanna look at the number on the skein of yarn in the picture. And this is category four, which is things like worsted weight yarn. It also has care directions, and since this is 100% wool, you're gonna only be hand washing it. You don't wanna knit something very beautiful and then end up having a scarf for a gnome because of the fact that you shrank it in the wash. So the other thing to pay attention, so here's the color and then the dye lot. So if you're gonna be knitting a bigger project, you wanna try to get the skeins from the same dye lot because there is, it's minimal, but sometimes if you're doing a project, there's enough of a difference if it comes from a different dye lot, if you have four skeins of one color from one dye lot and then one for that same color from a different dye lot. So there's nothing more heartbreaking than having that happen. Sometimes you can't avoid it, but this is a good way to just kind of keep track. That's where this statement comes from. Because of the dye lot, they recommend for color uniformity, purchase enough yarn at one time to complete your project. So that's where you have to pay attention to the amounts. So they have the weights as well as the yardage and the meters. If you live in the US like me, you're gonna pay attention to things like yards and ounces. In other places like Europe, I've noticed that they have everything in meters and centimeters. When I write my patterns, I write it in both inches and centimeters. So I have the US system as well as the metric system. The other thing to pay attention to is the needle size. So they have needles from size zero all the way up. I think I have size 40 needles that are used to make really, really chunky projects. You may as well be using your arms at that point, and some people do. So the needle size is US 7. So that's what I have here. And again, seven is the US size. 4.5 millimeters is ways of understanding it in terms of metrics. The nine inch and 23 centimeters is just the length of how long this needle is. So these are single pointed needles. You can also use circular needles for projects. So that's these. These are really great if you wanna make hats and you knit in the round. You also have double pointed needles when you get to the top of a project like a hat. So for today, I would recommend starting with single pointed needles for your first project because it makes it easy to handle and it also makes it easier to keep track of where you're at on a particular row or if you're at the end of the row and to monitor your progress to make sure that you're knitting evenly, which we'll get into in another video. But you wanna have nice even ends so that the edges of your project all look consistent. The last thing that I wanna mention that you'll see on here is the gauge. It's kind of the, the black sheep, to use an apt term, of the knitting world because you need to have a gauge but it's also kind of the biggest thorn in a lot of people's side, myself included. If you're a knitter, you wanna get started on your project right away. You don't wanna to have to sit and make a gauge swatch to figure out if you're actually knitting to gauge. The problem is if you don't, and this is an example of one of my advanced techniques that I've aired on a couple times, is then if you're knitting a sweater, you can wind up with a sweater for Bigfoot or a sweater for our small dog. So you wanna make sure you're paying attention to the gauge. When you're a new knitter, and this is something I'm guilty of too, chances are you're gonna probably knit a little tight 
or a little loose. People seem to go, in my experience teaching, one direction or another. When I first started knitting, I actually would knit so tight on the stitches that you couldn't even put the needle through without feeling like you were about to snap the needle. And admittedly, on a couple occasions, I did. Ironically, as an adult, I now knit on the looser side of things. The more stitches per inch, the finer the yarn or the tighter you're knitting. The fewer stitches per inch, like I was saying, with chunkier yarn, then that means that you're gonna have fewer stitches for every inch of yarn that you create. So for this particular project and for this particular yarn, it doesn't have how many rows per inch. For this project, since you're just gonna be knitting to a certain length in inches or centimeters, you don't have to worry about how many rows per inch. You cast off, I do recommend seeing how many rows per inch and how many stitches per inch you do to get a sense of how close you knit to the gauge and if you knit tighter or looser. And so this way you can start to get a sense for how you might need to start working in the future to loosen up if you were me or to tighten up if you were some other students that I've taught how to knit. So everyone is different. There again, no right or wrong. It's just getting a rhythm down. So as I was mentioning, you don't need to worry about exact number of rows in this particular project. You're just gonna focus on what length you want to knit to. So using the pattern that's in the description, you're gonna be determining if you wanna knit a newborn, an infant, a toddler, a child, a teen, an adult, or an adult large. So that's gonna determine not only how many stitches you cast on, but also how long you're gonna knit until you cast off. For the next video, I will be walking you through two of my favorite casting on techniques. So to recap, just to get started, you're gonna to wanna to get one skein of this nature spun brown sheep yarn in the worsted size, and then you're going to pick out, they have lovely color options, so you wanna pick that out. You wanna have it wound up like this little cake to make it easy to draw through. And then you're gonna to need to get a set of Clover needles in US 7. You can get these online from Clover for cheap. I'll include a link to how to purchase these and these in the description so you can get your hands on it. This is Arctic Moss, which I really like. I love that sea foamy sage-ish green color. Where we live in Montana, sage is such a beautiful color on the landscape, so I wear, I wear it a lot. And then for the next tutorial, we'll walk through getting started with casting on. Thanks for joining me today. Thank you.